ladies and gentlemen, we are going to make a solar powered garden bulkhead lamp today. This is going to be fantastic. Keep watching. Ladies and gents, let me show you how to make slightly less chavy solar powered garden tat. What is the plan, Stan? This is a, a bulkhead light that I got from a mate of mine, Pete. It was in pretty bad shape. So, um, so I spent some time cleaning it up and after a fashion reconditioning it. The plan ultimately is to turn this into a lovely bit of garden solar lighting tat. You know, uh, something a little bit different than you know your neighbors might have sitting out in their garden made of plastic perhaps they bought it from Sainsbury's well this proper glass normally this would come with a bulb in it and uh, a little bulb holder and all of this kind of stuff is going to be useful for the future and I'm sorry about all the noise outside I get some right loony bins around this neck of the woods and it's not just me yeah so we're not going to really need that we're not really going to need that the plan is to put two or three LEDs in here high brightness LEDs and some lithium ion cells so there'll be a cable going in this end here what we're going to end up with is a rather beautiful bulk headlight sitting on the wall and outside at solar powered. So having said all of that you guys are gonna laugh your bum holes off when I show you this. It's um it originally it was actually a solar powered light and uh it had like a little bung sort of similar to that that had a solar panel on the top of it and a tiny little crappy LED but now it's got a solar panel a lithium ion cell and uh, a higher power LED in it. And it's all wrapped in cling film to stop the elements from getting to it. But the deal here, this has been running out in the garden, come rain or shine, for at least 10 days now. The deal is, is it works and it stays on all the time because I want it on even during the day because it makes it look pretty. Oh, look how pretty I'll be. I'll be really pretty. I, I'm so pretty. Oh, so pretty. Battery and light bulb system. It does have a battery management circuit uh, connected to it as well. This was actually charged up to 4.2 volts. And it's uh, sat here in this cling film looking oh so pretty. Um for quite some time, so uh, as 10 days I would say. So let's just make sure we're in voltage mode. Let's have a look at the voltage across the battery. 4.2 volts, look at that. It hasn't skipped a beat. I mean, this is all relatively simple stuff and it's all made from junk that I've had lying around the house. This here, this is a Peli case and it has a little pressure release valve on the front of it here. You can literally, you could stand on this, you could drive over it in your car. But what I did is I cemented a, uh, a solar panel in the front of it and I cemented it in there with a very special type of epoxy. This solar panel here charges lithium ion cells. And I can almost guarantee you right now that that lithium ion cell is sitting there at a very healthy, let's just bring in the meter, 4.2, 4.21 volts. I mean, pff, gee, absolutely fantastic stuff, eh? This may also get converted into an outdoor lithium ion charger at some point, because it's completely waterproof. It's, you know, I can literally just chuck that outside. It's almost indestructible. It'll sit there and it'll charge lithium ion cells for me. Anyway, we're getting a little bit off topic and I'm sorry about that. Let's go ahead and make this garden tat. I've found a solar panel upstairs. I have a small stock of them. I'm a bit sad like that. In fact, I found a whole load of BMSs and LEDs up there as well. So the plan, I'm just going to take this outside. There you go. You can see in a cloudy environment, it's pushing about seven volts. That's not bad. Here's the BMS and here's three LEDs. There's a car horn and some people chatting. 
And here's a, an 18650. Thinking about it then, so 250 milliamps, 8 volts. This charges on 4.2 volts, uh, and that's a maximum charge for it. So, um, so 8 volts means that even on a cloudy day, this should be producing more than enough drive to be able to charge the battery through the battery management PCB. These LEDs consume about 20 milliamps each when they're in series with a 22 ohm resistor, I think it was, I put in there. So that said, that means that in the night time it'll stay on because the battery's driving it, and in the daytime it'll stay on because the sunshine is charging the panel and charging the battery. This, surely this can't go wrong, right? This, this this absolutely makes sense. I'll tell you what I will do. I'll make sure I give it a few days um, and show you it working. Ah, yes. The first thing I always like to do is put a diode in series with the solar panel. If we've put some kind of diode in the circuit, that'll stop potential for problems. And also, it'll drop the voltage down from the solar panel ever so slightly, which isn't a bad thing. Use a magnifying glass to establish which side is the positive side of the LED and which side is the negative side. Next part of the mission, <laughs> wire it up. So there's a 22 ohm resistor connected here in series with all of these LEDs that are presently in parallel parallel so this side if you remember was the positive side so let's go ahead and connect lithium ion battery to it and look at that battery light bulb fantastic look at those they're absolutely beautiful get the battery management pcb installed get the solar cell and the diode sorted and boom, there we go. Now we've got access to the pads. So positive end is this guy here, denoted by a little tiny bit of red put on by permanent marker. Yeah, that should do the trick. There we go, let's get that on there like that. Perfect. And then this guy, ooh, didn't tin that. Let's just, uh, just tin that joint, there we go. And let's get that on there like that. Now the battery management PCB has been installed on the battery and the LEDs are being driven by the battery. And look at those bad boys, they're quite bright and beautiful. So now it's time to install the solar panel to keep this continuously charged. Let's put this out of the way for a minute. Let's fit the diode, there we go, to the solar panel. And now we can put a cable on here that feeds directly onto the same terminals that the battery and LEDs are on. So just as a little distraction, we've got the meter set in current mode. And we're going to have a quick look and see how much current these LEDs are drawing when they're connected to the meter. <laughs> 31 milliamps. Not a lot. This is the really fun bit. So let's get this taken apart. What we've got to do now is we've got to fit this <laughs> and those in here. <laughs> Let me show you this. Oh my goodness, this is what I've ended up coming up with. Look at that. So I've taped up the connectors for the minute because I need to pass them through the, uh, the grommet hole. This is quite dubious. This is self-amalgamating tape. Why is it called self-amalgamating tape? Because it amalgamates to itself. I'll show you what I mean in a few minutes. But first things first, it's like a, a stretchy, rubbery goop. It's really quite interesting. It's completely waterproof. When it touches itself, it just seems to sort of suck itself to itself. I don't know if that's a really good thing to tell people or not. But um, anyway, we'll go ahead and we're going to put some of that around the seal, around the outside here, so when the glass is in place, 
the glass sticks down and no water penetrates. Uh, this is going to be like IP67 rated or IP65 rated when we're done. And then we've got the glue gun out right now and we're just going to go ahead and glue gun in these bits and pieces here and make sure everything's nice and stable. We really want to seal this input here. So what we're going to do <laughs> is we're going to hit this with some hot glue first off, just to give it a little bit of purchase. And once we've got that nailed down with a bit of hot glue, then we're going to hit it with the self amalgamating tape. Let's pull off a decent length of this stretchy self amalgamating tape. And then, let's start to build a bung. Build a bung. <laughs> Look at that. Absolutely spot on. Now, all we've got to do is get that self-amalgamating tape inside this bung here Clearly it's going to take a bit of screwdrivering, squish it in there. This is genuinely fantastic stuff. It will be watertight down to about 300 meters. I love it. It's really good. Okay, oh no. Now I've got like loads of threads worth of of screwing that needs doing. Okay, come on. Alright, I'm going to have to apologise for that lovely spiral thread that's in there now. Look at that. What a beautiful spiral thread. That's just because I've twisted that on in place. We've got to fill up the outside of this with self amalgamating tape as well, haven't we? Tape. Come on, be enough, be enough. You know you need to be enough. Oh yes, it's more than enough. In fact, there's too much. Right, there we go. Let's get the lid on. Lids on, boys, lids on. There okay, that's nice and squishy. Lovely. We've got to connect them to this. And then we need to find a way to hot glue the crap out of the solar panel. Uh, problem is, I don't know which one's negative and which one's positive. Great news, we have a meter. Negative, positive, make sure we're not in the wrong mode so we don't blow the meter up. And, oh, uh, battery is a little bit low. So, um, yes, this guy here is positive and this guy here is negative. Perfect. Right, let's get the meter on that. Hopefully they didn't switch positions when I was grabbing the meter. Fan dabby dozy, as the crankies said many years ago. What I've done is I've just put a little hot glue on those two terminals there and there. The reason behind that is I don't want these terminals to get water on them and then, you know, start to corrode. Now the next part of this mission is making that fit to there, like that. How do we want it? There we go. A little bit of an angle on it, I think. Something like that. Yeah, there we go. And then we have the most epic piece of garden tat. Okay, so I've literally, I've just hit this with oodles of hot glue. <laughs> About 15 glue sticks later. Look at that, absolutely spot on. <laughs> aligned perfectly. Is that aligned perfectly? Um, anyway, I think it's done. Let's bolt it to the wall. I've always wanted my very own garden bulk headlamp. 
even Mrs. Blackbird has drawn an infinity to the light.